So here's the question. Why is runner B's heart rate so much higher than runner A when they're both doing the exact same thing? Same run, same pace, same distance, but completely different heart rates. Who's fitter? Who's overtraining? And what does it actually mean when your watch screams at you? Today, we're breaking down exactly what your running heart rate reveals about your fitness, your recovery, and your progress. Stick around. You'll never look at your numbers the same way again. There are three main reasons for this. Runner B might be newer to running, meaning their physiological system is less efficient and the heart has to pump faster to meet demand. Simply put, the first reason is different levels of fitness. So when we start exercise, our bodies are less primed to use the oxygen from the atmosphere. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that we are not good at taking the oxygen from the air through our lungs down to the alveoli and then into the blood. And once that oxygen gets there, we've got fewer red blood cells to grab that oxygen and take it to the working muscles. Combined with that, we also have poor vasodilation of our blood vessels, which means the body can't control the flow of blood as well. And so our heart has to work harder to then get those red blood cells down to the working muscles. Now at the working muscles, we also have fewer mitochondria, which means that the muscles can use less oxygen to produce energy. And so we need more oxygen to produce the same amount of energy, and that means the heart rate has to go up. And then finally, we have got fewer muscle fibers that are fit enough to do the work. And so the body can't rotate those fibers around. And what means then is that we have to use more muscle fibers. The more muscle fibers we use, the higher the demand for energy, and therefore we need more oxygen and the heart rate has to go up. And then the final reason why that heart rate goes up when we are not yet fit is that we have to also get rid of the byproducts of energy metabolism, including carbon dioxide. And so the heart has to work harder for all of those processes to be the same as runner A. And the second reason why heart rates might be different in two runners running at the same speed is that one runner may be less efficient than the other runner. And if you are less efficient, you are working harder at the same speed, which means your demand for energy goes up and so does your heart rate. And then there's reason number three. If runner B hasn't slept well, is stressed, or hasn't recovered from their last session, their heart rates will go up even if the pace feels easy. And so what I'm talking about is fatigue. When the body is fatigued, it is working through other aspects to help get you ready and more recovered. Namely, it is really helping get rid of metabolites, it is helping resynthesize muscles that were already damaged, and so it's redirecting resources elsewhere meaning that there's a smaller blood volume that is available for your exercise and your heart rate has to necessarily increase to then accommodate for the increase in load that you're asking it to do. This can usually be picked up pre-run, in particular with your resting heart rate, as your heart rate will be elevated due to the body being under stress from lack of rest and recovery. And we do not always need to act on this, but I do recommend that if you have a higher intensity session planned, that you substitute that with a lower intensity session, an easy run, or even some cross training. And really just be aware that high heat and humidity can lead to increases in heart rates as well, because the body needs to cope with the dual process of cooling you down and providing energy for the task at hand. So in those summer months, be sure to slow down your pace and come the fall or the winter, you will be very grateful for that. So is a high heart rate bad? Not always. It could be something as simple as poor sleep, a fight with someone, work-related stress, or something maybe more significant like overreaching in your training. Your body needs more muscle fiber recruitment, even at the same work, because the muscles are tired in that overreaching stage. Or resources are needed elsewhere to maybe cope with recovery or even an early fight against infection, inflammation, or some sort of disease. Let's clear up a big myth. There is no magic number, but there is a target zone. And that target zone is between 65 and 75% of your heart rate max. A simple way to do it is to use 180 minus age. It's not going to give you the exact zone, but it's going to make sure that you stay in what we call zone 2, 
which is the zone where most of the energy produced is through oxidative pathways or using oxygen. This is a very efficient way for your body to produce energy and it also produces less metabolites so it's much easier for your body to clear out the byproducts of exercise. The other thing that is important is that the fatigue resistant muscles are also the ones that use more oxygen and that means that you're training the right muscles for the long run. Zone 2 is really where the magic happens. You build your aerobic capacity, you improve your body's ability to utilize energy sources, and you train your heart to work efficiently. And you do it all without spiking your cortisol or increasing the risk of injury. If you're always training above zone two, you're likely in that gray zone. Too hard to recover, but not hard enough to properly adapt. That's where progress stalls. Stay in zone two build your base and layer on speed later. That's how you train smarter. Here's where heart rate tells the real story and it's got to do with your recovery. As your fitness improves, your resting heart rate gets lower, which essentially means that you have the higher capacity to do more work within that range. Your heart rate will also stay lower during familiar efforts like your easy and your long runs meaning that your body is becoming more efficient at the same intensity. And lastly, your heart rate recovers faster after your harder workouts. If runner A's heart rate drops by 40 beats in a minute, while runner B's heart rate maybe only drops 10, the chances are runner A is recovering better and has better adaptation, while runner B might be fatigued. This recovery curve is one of the best signs that your training is working. Don't just track pace, track how fast you bounce back. Train for faster recovery, not just for faster splits. Heart rate gives you real-time feedback. If it's high, it could be a lack of sleep, it could be hot, it could be under recovery. But it also shows improvements over time. Same pace and a lower heart rate shows improved efficiency. Faster recovery times means that you are adapting to the training and a lower resting heart rate means that you are improving aerobically. It's not about chasing low numbers. It's about chasing patterns or trends. And don't make the mistake of comparing your heart rate to someone else's. Yours is specific and relative to you. So use your data, use those trends to adjust intensity, to spot fatigue, to improve your recovery and track your progress. In other words, stop guessing. Start measuring and train with intent. If you're over 50, feeling stuck, confused, or unsure how to use heart rate, scan the QR code on screen now. We've built a free calculator that you can use to work out your anaerobic threshold. Not a guess based on your age, but based on your actual physiology. You plug in a simple test run and it'll give you the heart rate zones that you should train at to build your aerobic base properly. It's built for older runners, it's free, and it's the thing that could finally make your heart rate work for you. Now let's talk about the most underrated tool in heart rate training, the adaptation curve. Your heart rate doesn't just respond to a single workout, but rather over time based on trends. If your heart rate trend over a period of time starts decreasing in your easy runs, it's usually a good sign that your aerobic system is improving. If your max heart rate is harder to reach during those high intensity intervals, it's probably as a result of accumulated fatigue. If your heart rate recovery bounces back quicker than it did a few months ago, you're on the right track. These patterns tell the real story not the daily spikes or highs and lows. Heart rate variability, resting heart rate, or even training zones are like chapters in a book. The full story is only revealed if you read the whole thing. So start measuring these trends and not just the individual number. So what does your heart rate really say about you? It tells us how fit you are, how fatigued you are, and how well you are recovering. In our next video, we'll break down exactly how to train for a sub 20 minute 5k with specific zones, paces and workouts. Even if you're not there yet, this will show you what smart speed work looks like. Click here to watch it. Let's turn your data into personal bests.